Talk service. It's nice to see some familiar face I haven't seen in a while, because I know some people come to the nine o'clock. I think there's a little bit of an echo, or is my mic a little too high? Am I just too loud? Okay, I'm going to ask everyone if you can stand to your feet, please. So today I have the privilege of preaching the word. As you know, sometimes our pastors need to take that break, need to go get refreshed, get refueled. We all need it at one point, at one time, so that's what they're doing right now. And I want you to just always, when they're not here, even when they're here, continue to pray for them. Nobody knows what a pastor goes through until you're in those shoes. They're the most criticized. People backstab them. I mean, you name it. I mean, I can go onto the list. But the more you encourage them, the more you thank them, the more he'll, he'll be happy to be here. You know, I think no matter what, he's doing what he's doing, because God has called him to do it. And the same thing for leaders here, other pastors here. It's because God has called them. And there's nothing greater than when we see the flock really respond, when the flock actually receives, when there, there's a pull, when there's a hunger. When there's a hunger and there's a thirst, things begin to change. It sets the atmosphere. So I want you to go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes. We're going to open up in prayer. Father, I just thank you right now. I thank you for the opportunity that you've given me, Father God. I don't take it lightly. It's an honor. It's always an honor to be here. It's an honor to be in your house. How many times in other countries, oh Lord, people desire to be in a setting just like this where they have air conditioning, where they have live worship, where they don't have to hide. Just as Pastor Joe Hernandez talked about what happens in Dubai, Afghanistan, and all those places. I think it real, makes people realize how good we have it here. But sometimes because we have it so good, oh Lord, we get too comfortable. So we just want to thank you for this moment and this hour that your presence is here. We give you the glory and we give you the honor, Lord. We come before you, oh God, because we're hungry, because we're thirsty for your divine presence. I ask right now, Lord, that the windows of heaven be open, that when I begin to declare the word, it begins to shake, it begins to penetrate, it begins to touch every believer that is here, oh God, that when they leave this room, they will leave changed, that they have received the word, that they have caught the word, that the word had begun to transform them. I just thank you for it right now, Lord, and I thank you for what you will do. In Jesus' name, everybody says amen, amen. and amen. Go ahead, take your seat. All right. Maybe I'm a little too loud. They're going to adjust me. All right. So I'm going to, I always like to bring like a story or something that happened to me that goes with the message and I, I've always told the Spanish service, I never want to preach a message that I, hasn't preached to me first. I think when you've lived it, when it's, when it's ministered to you, that's when you can deliver it even more. It begins to penetrate the person that's listening to it. So this story that I'm going to tell you about, it happened before I was uh, a believer. I had this, we had this friend of the family that was very close and she was, uh, the, the person was selling a product, and we decided to help them out. So we're like, all right, we'll buy the product, you know, give you a hand and help you out. So we wrote a check, and as we wrote the check, we gave it to them, they gave, they gave us the product. Later on, we began to notice that there was all of a sudden these weird withdrawals from our bank account. And then my wife was asking me, like, hey, did you buy something for this amount? And I was like, no. So we just ignored it. We thought it was maybe just something we didn't remember. And then more withdrawals started to happen in bigger amounts. And then she kept asking me, did you buy this? I was like, no. I was always like, get off me. No, but I, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> but I, but I, I was asking, uh, my wife just kept asking me, I was like, did you buy this? Did you buy this other thing? I was like, no, I haven't bought none of this. So I was like, let me call the places where these items were purchased. And some of them were actually online. So when I called, they gave me actually the name of the person that was using our account. And I, and I didn't know this, uh, that in the check that, that has the routing number and everything on, underneath your account, 
And that's, I guess, how they did it. They got all the count, and that's, they kept using that. And I was like, wow, how naive I was, you know. But I didn't expect that, would, that was going to happen, you know, from somebody that I knew. And that was very close. So something began to happen in my heart. Every time we got together, I saw this person. I never told them that I knew who, who it was or that I found out that they were actually withdrawing money out of our account. And so bitterness, anger, resentment, I took offense of the action of what she took, of, of what this person did. And so as, as it went along, we kept getting uh, together. We did more family get-togethers. And it got to the point where if I saw the person, I didn't even want to be there. Or if I knew that they were going to be there, I didn't even want to show up. And eventually, there was another get-together. Happens, this person happens to be there. And they noticed that I, every time I would avoid them, I'd go to one direction, I'd go, I mean, I'd try to avoid them, period. I didn't want to say something that later on I would regret, and so I just left it as that. Well, this time the person came to me and said, Edgar, please forgive me. And what I responded with her, I was like, why would you do this? I was like, if you needed money, if you needed help, I would have gladly helped you. I would have gladly helped you. The money ain't the issue. I was like, it was the action, what you did, what you did behind my back, the integrity, that you were willing to do this behind my back. I was like, that really hurt. And so she was looking at me, and she started to weep. She was weeping, weeping. And then, and then she's like, please forgive me, Edgar. And I was like, yes, I, I forgive you. I forgive you. I hugged her, and I, and I told her I forgive her. And then everything that I was carrying was completely gone. It was completely gone. That bitterness, that anger, everything that I had, the emotions that I had, the offense that I took for what she did was completely gone. And then every time I see her, like nothing ever happened. And you may be wondering, why, why am I talking to you about this? But let me ask you this. How many times, or maybe till this day, you've been holding on to a grudge, an offense for so long? It's been years. It's been years and you're still holding on to this offense You've been holding on so much, it seems like they even put you in a pickle jar where they can, people can notice your expressions. You're bitter. You're, you're angry. You have this thing against that your brother or sister. And so how many times it doesn't happen, doesn't it happen in the church? You see, the, oh, here he comes. So I'm, I'm going to go this way to avoid that person because I don't want to say nothing to him. Many leave churches because they got offended at someone or something someone said, did, or didn't do. But let me tell you this, the majority of the time of those who get uprooted from where they were, planted, they never get rooted anywhere else. They go from one place to another place, and they're carrying the offense. And then they wonder why nothing changes. It's because they're, they're, they got rooted but in the offense. They were never rooted in the church. They were never rooted in the church. Listen to this, Luke chapter 17, verse 1. Then he, it says uh, this in uh, the New King James Version. Luke chapter 17, verse 1. Then he said to his di disciples, It's impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. What is the word saying to us? that many offenses are going to come. You can't hide from them. You can't say, oh, this ain't going to... You're going to get offended, period. You're going to get offended. You're going to get offended. That means that offenses are going to happen. They're going to come. You can't run away from them. But when they do come, it's up to you what you, what you do with them, what you do with that offense. And you might be asking, what's the topic? I've been on a series called, uh, well, let me, tell, let me go back a little bit before I even tell you the series that I've been in the Spanish service. I was praying and asking the Lord what series I was going to go on the next, you know, section of the, the next Sundays. And I can't, well, as I was praying and meditating in the presence of the Lord, I was like, what is it that the people need? What is it that you see? What is, and, and, and the word came, struggle. And I was like, struggle, struggle. And I was like, well, struggle with what? And then just all of a sudden, all these topics came. And you guys have heard the term, the struggle is real. 
The struggle is real. Well, that, that's the series that I'm on. The struggle is real. So the first one that I, that I taught on the series, I'm on the, this is the fourth one. The, four, the first one that I taught is the struggle to serve God. It wasn't a good topic, so, so to say, for, for the church, because that's where we're at. Everybody has excuses why they can't serve, why they can't come to church, why they can't do this, why they can't do that, but you have time for everything else, but not for God. But it's time that the church wakes up. And I've been saying this every time I preach because of the times we're living in. But we have excuses. Yeah, you could be in the fair. You could be wiggling your booty at a club. But you can't be in church. Oh, no, no. And then the other thing is people have gotten too comfortable. Too comfortable. The second, um, the second teaching was the struggle in doing good. And the third teaching that I taught was the struggle against the faith. And today, what I'm going to teach is the struggle against offenses. The struggle against offenses. And you know, my first point is, and you may be, it's, it's kind of weird, it's called the setup. The first point, you can write it down, the setup. And you'll understand why the setup. The enemy wants to sift you as wheat. You all know that. You know that the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour, 1 Peter 5.8. He's, he's watching, he's examining you, he's, he's, he's looking at every detail to know when he can attack. He never attacks you when you're the, when, when you're in the, the strongest in your faith, when, you're, when everything is going well, when you've been coming, praying, fasting, when you've been, because you're strong. But the moment you get distracted, the moment you begin to not do the things that you should be doing, that's when the enemy strikes. The word offenses in Luke chapter 17, verse 1, is the Greek word for scandalon. Scandalon. This word is a noun meaning that a trigger of a trap on which the bait is placed and which when touched by an animal springs and causes it to close, causing entrapment. Offenses is the enemy's setup to get you trapped. It's the setup. Once he gets you trapped, then things begin to change. But the thing is, there's something that, there's a process that happens when the setup is happening. So I brought a prop. Let me get it. If I can get it. All right, here we go. So how many fishermen in here? All right, don't criticize my fishing skills. So... Yeah, <laughs> someone said, uh, there's, I'm not going to catch much here. Hey, we'll catch souls, right? So everything starts with how you set up your, your pole line. It's the process. It's the setup. You begin to put, you know, your way. You begin to put your, your, your lure, the, you know, all that stuff. It's how you set it up. And that's what the enemy does. He's doing all, this, all these things to set up to what? To trap you. It's scandal on. It's a trap. And one of the things that he's using right now is offenses. People get offended for everything. For everything. And I will say this right now because of where we're at. People are so divided right now because whether, should people get vaccinated or should, or, or should they? Should they not or should they? They're, they're divided. They're divided. And all because misinformation brings confusion. So the one thing I will tell you, like I told in the Spanish service, everybody's going to be in a unique uh, situation. Seek the Lord and what you should do. Seek the Lord. The reason people go to someone, it's because it's easier to receive and they don't have to do no work. They don't have to do nothing. But, but when you know you have to seek the Lord, you have to get in your, in your prayer closet. You have to get in that, into that intimacy. You have to get into that secret room. But people don't want to do that. They'd rather go to somebody to receive direction because it's easier. It's easier. So he sets it up. And as he begins to set up things, things begin to change because sometimes, I don't know if you notice, when you go fishing, you're not catching anything. You're like, man, what is going on? 
Sometimes it could be at the time of day that you went. The weather, the time, all has to do with it. But let's say you put everything on your rod, you put everything that you, you should, and, it, and you're still not catching anything. Well, then what you end up doing, okay, I have to change the lure. I have to change a different lure to what? To catch what I need to catch. The enemy does the same thing. If he can't get you with one thing, he'll get you with another thing. And the thing is, he's constantly, he's constantly looking. He's constantly observing you. He's constantly studying you. Why? Because if he can't get you with this, he'll get you with that. But you got to be vigilant. you got to be sober. That's why those that get drunk, those that get high, they don't even know. They already got a hook in their mouth. They're not sober. They're not vigilant. Not, not everything's profitable. Not everything's good for you. This is what will make you successful. It's how you dress it, how you, how you set it up. It's all in the setup. Well, the enemy does the same, and he knows how to dress the lion with the lure that will attract you or get you hooked. What offends someone may not offend another or may not offend you. Now, I'll give you a story. If you go back to Genesis chapter 4, what happened with Cain and Abel? Everybody knows that Abel offered his first fruits. Cain offered whatever he wanted, pretty much the leftovers. Cain's offering was rejected, but Abel's was received, and the Lord rejoiced. So the enemy used this act as a way to get what? Cain offended. He began to bring, uh, get an offense that he's like, well, what, what my, my, my giving isn't good enough? What I give isn't good enough? And why did you receive Abel's? But you didn't receive mine, so he took offense of it. And that's how the enemy got him hooked. He used the lure of offense. When in fact it was his doing, but Satan had Cain now because he was offended by it. And listen to what I'm going to tell you. Just as Cain offered his leftovers, people do the same now and get offended. Why? Why is this person blessed? Well, he gives his talent and his time. You just give him your leftover time. You serve whenever you want to. Or sometimes you don't even serve. Should it go on? Many say, well, I give an offering. Well, your neighbor gives his offering and his tithe. All you do is just, you just tip God. And you want something to change. You want him to receive it. You want him to see it this way. I mean, you get offended. You take an offense. I hear that from so many people. Why is this person so blessed? Why Have you asked them, what is he doing? What is he doing? Cain and Abel, same thing. Cain and Abel. Staying offended also is, is being in disobedience. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 6, verse 37, to forgive and you will be forgiven. How do you expect God to forgive you if you're not willing to forgive the person who offended you? We offend God all the time. We offend God all the time. Don't think that you're too perfect or you're too holy. We do things. We, we do mistakes. We offend them. And this is why some still today are still hooked in the lure of offenses, which takes us to the next point when you're hooked. When you're hooked, Matthew chapter 24, verse 10 through 13 says this. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. What started it off? It says many were offended. And many will be offended. The offense started, made them start betraying one another, hating one another. Even false prophets arose, began to prophesy. All because of what? Because of offenses. Offenses comes and it begins to divide. It begins to attack. You begin to attack one another. So be on your guard. Next time you get offended or something happens... Because the enemy is right at the door. Once you're hooked, 
That is why people betray one another and hate, and hate arises. All of a sudden, you, you can't see that person that offended you, and that's why many leave churches. They leave one church, they go to another church because they got offended. Oh, I got offended because they didn't use me. Oh, I got offended because someone made faces at me or didn't say hi. Oh, I got offended because they pulled this person to oversee this ministry. The one that always gets me is where they say, oh, this person didn't even came up and say hi to me. They didn't say nothing to me. They walked by or they, said, or they were in a certain area and they didn't come and say hi to me. Well, it works both ways. Did you go over there and say hi to him? Did you go say hi to him? What if that other person got offended because you didn't go and say hi to them? <laughs> it works both ways. And there's times where you can catch, I mean, it's not that you're doing it intentionally. It's happened to me before. I'm like, oh, and I'm saying hi to all these people. And then I saw one person that I, I, I if I remember, I'll go back and say hi to that person. Because I know how the enemy works. But next time, if somebody didn't say hi to you and you already start feeling that, just go up to them and say hi to them. Yeah. Go hug them. Go love on them. Yeah. I think this is what the church needs more. Yeah. To love one another, to say hi to one another. Yeah. A godly kiss in the cheek. That's how it used to be. Yeah. Right. Now COVID's got us all separated, right? <laughs> Distance, this and that. But we, we must not neglect the things that God called us to do to love one another. If you know that somebody's got COVID, call them up. Pray for them. Send them Uber Eats. Do something. It's just not up to the, the pastors. It's just not up to the leaders. It's everybody's. It's up to everybody. Are we all a family? So that's what we need to do. More than anything right now, we need our, our light needs to shine more than anything right now. If you want to stay offended, you will stay hooked on the lure of offense. When you get hooked on the lure, you start, you know, when you're fishing and you catch this fish, you all of a sudden start reeling it in, right? And most of what they've taught me and I went fly fishing. I had never done fly fishing. Some other fly fishing and, you know, casting the, the line constantly and everything. And, but once you, get, you, you caught a fish, you kind of reel it in a little bit. And then you, you, let them, you let them fight. You let them fight and you let them try to get away from you. And wh why do you do that? So the fish gets tired. So once the fish is tired of fighting, tired of, of swimming away, tired of then you start reeling them in little by little. You bring them in, you bring them in, you bring them in, you bring them in. After there's no fight. Well, what am I trying to say with this? There are Christians that have no more fight in them. They have no more fight in them. And the enemy's reeling them in. They tried this church. They tried this other church. They tried this ministry. They went to this other ministry because they got offended. Oh, they went from this home group and then they go to this other home group because they got offended. And they're tired. They're tired. They're, 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 tr they're trying to swim away. They're trying to do everything they can. But offense has them hooked. The offense has them hooked. And, you're over, and the enemy's over here taking his time. He's reeling you in. He's reeling you in. When all it takes for you to get unhooked is to forgive that person. All it takes is for you to go make, make right with that person. Just go to that person. What if it was your dad? What if it's your mom? What if it's a brother or a sister, a family member? You haven't talked to them in years, and you're still offended. You're still offended. You're still bitter about it. And you wonder why you're always tired. You wonder why there's no joy in you. You wonder why there's no peace in you. When you know you should make things right. And that's the tactic that the enemy does. He wants to get you tired. Once he gets you tired, he's, he's bringing you in. He's bringing you home. To what? To do his will. Right. Have you noticed that when a person is offended, they get together with other people that are offended too? It's like, man, I'm not going to stay here alone with this. 
I'm going to grab this person. I'm going to link with this person. And then all of a sudden, everybody's in agreement. I was like, oh, yeah. The pastor said this. And that's why I'm offended. Oh, you too? Oh, hey, we got to get together. Let's get this group text going. Listen, if the word offended you, good. If the word offended you, good. If the Bible offends you, good. If the name of Jesus offends you, good. Get over it. Get over it. Because so many people are saying right now, there's many ways. There's many ways to heaven. Worship Buddha. Worship Allah. Worship all these idols or whatever you have, your money. But there's only one way, and that is Jesus. There's only one way, and that is Jesus. The Lord war, uh, uh, warned Cain, and just as he warned him, he warns us. Listen to this, Genesis chapter 4, verse 6 through 7. Why are you so angry, the Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right, but if you refuse to do what is, what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you, but you must subdue it and master it and be its master. He was saying, sin is right there. Sin is right there. In other words, he was, the Lord was telling him, if you do what is right, I will accept, I will accept your offering. If, if you would have offered your first fruit, I would have accepted it too. And you still have an opportunity. But did Cain do it? No. He stayed offended. And because he stayed offended, what did he do? He even killed his own brother. If you're not careful with offenses, it will take you to do the most radical thing. Things that you never thought you would have done. How many homicides happen? How many things are happening right now, as we say it? The other day I went to a stab. I don't know what the issue was, but this person got stabbed in the middle of the night and was dead completely, just with one stab wound. You saw what happened the other day on a Wednesday. Went in different places, Finley, Kennaway, Richland, Who knows what happened, but I can guarantee you this. Usually people, when they start doing it, it's because they took offense of something. The enemy hooked them. He hooked them with something, with some sort of bait, and then reeled them in and then subdued them to what? To do what he wanted them to do. The Lord gave him an out to Cain, but he didn't take it. And the offense got worse to the point where he even killed his own brother. The Bible tells us that Cain became a wanderer. He went from place to place. This is what happens with those who carry offenses. They go from place to f place feeling the same way. Place to place. The, the Bible says that he, he couldn't find no rest. He couldn't find no rest. He went from one place to another place, and that thing still carried on. He was carrying. It's kind of like a, a spiritual backpack. The more things you, you want to carry the heavier that load's going to become. You go to one place, you'll still have that backpack. It doesn't matter if you switch pastors. It doesn't matter if you switch churches. It doesn't matter if you switch ministries. You're still carrying that. You're still carrying that offense. So wherever you go, you're going to carry it. Wherever you go, you're going to carry it. Have you ever heard of uh, the term in, well, in fishing called catch and release? I know probably Matt has heard that. Catch and release. Catch and release. You know, there's places where you go fishing and whatever you caught, you have, to, you have to release it. You have to let go of it. When I was fly fishing, that's what we had to do. I was thinking, I was like, oh, man, I'm going to get a, keep all these fish. Nope. Every time we caught one, we had to release it. And this is what the enemy has to do with you. The moment you ask for forgiveness, the moment you repent, the moment you make right those things right with your brother or sister, what happens? The enemy has to release you. He may have caught you, but now he has to release you. I mean, I think some of you needs to, need to begin to say, you know what? The enemy has to release you. 
has to release me. Today I declare that the Lord is going to re release you. Why? Because the enemy had you at one point caught, but now because of that, because you ask for forgiveness, the enemy will have to release you. How many have, have, caught, have caught you by, by, the, by the moment, a moment where you, let's say you didn't, um, you didn't ask for forgiveness, and you left it, linger, you left it there. But then you can go back and say, you know what, I remember when I asked for forgiveness, all of a sudden, things began to change. And there, there could be times where maybe uh, somebody offended you and they didn't even know that they offended you. That happened to me at work with a coworker, And I know we were always joking around. And I must have said something that really pricked him in his heart. And so I told him, I was like, you know what? I've been noticing my coworker, so-and-so. He's been just quiet, doesn't want to even talk to me anymore. And he's like, well, maybe you did something. Maybe you offended him. And I was like, well, we're always joking around. I was like, well, he's got to put his big boy pants on. That, that's what I'm saying. And it's just how we are. We're wired in the fire service. And so, and the thing is, when you see blood, man, the attack is on. It's just the way it is. It's, it's the atmosphere. And uh, so days went on, and I was like, I'm not going to say nothing to him. I was like, let him get off his high horse. So it began to, you know, made me think more and more. And I'm like, man, something's going on here. I was like, something ain't right. And so I started talking to my wife. I was like, and she, and she was the one that brought it up. And she's like, well, maybe you offended him. And then I started thinking, I was like, well, I don't know what I could have I said or done to offend him. We're always joking around. So then I asked him, I approached him, I was like, hey, did I offend you in some way? And then he's like, yeah, you offended me by, what you, by this that you said. I'm like, you know, we're always joking around. I was like, that was never my intention to offend you. He's like, but it did offend me. I'm like, okay. I was like, well, I was like, forgive me. That wasn't my intentions. He's like, that's all I needed. That, and that's what he said. That's all I needed. And then after that, he was fine. We're back to square one, like nothing ever happened. But that's what I'm saying. You don't know. Sometimes you could be joking around. You could be doing something. Somebody may be going through a bad day. Oh, I almost caught myself. Uh, <laughs> There, 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 there are times where, you know, you're, you're going through your day, day by day, and then all of a sudden something happens, and you don't know. I mean, you're going through something, something at work, something personal at home. Maybe something's going on at church, or maybe it's just a pileup. And all it takes is one word for you to get offended, one action for you to get offended. And once, you, once the enemy grabs you and he gets you hooked, then it's hard to get, get unhooked. Listen to this, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 through 26. And the servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, and humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses, and listen to this, and escape the snare of the devil, having them been taken captive by him to do his will. So that tells you that there was a snare. If that snare has somebody, then he's to subdue and he's doing the will of the enemy. So now you're on his hands. You're on his terms. So it's best to be walking in forgiveness. Be quick to forgive. Be quick to forgive. So how do you protect your heart from offenses? I'm going to give you three points real quick. One, admit that you got offended. Admit that you got offended. It has been said that the way to overcome a struggle or an addiction is by admitting that you do have it or that you're addicted or that you didn't get offended, that something happened. Because how can you move on from something that you think that you, don't, you haven't done or you no, don't need of, you know? Until you deal with the issue, then that it can get addressed, and then you can move on from there. A person cannot be healed from offenses if they don't admit it first. Second point, let it go. It's that easy. Let it go. When you release the offenses, you let yourself out of the trap. It's that easy. Just let it go. Sometimes we think that by letting them go, that we, let, we have left them off the hook. 
That we're like, oh, if I forgive him, then, then he's going to think it's, everything's all right. Whatever happened, it's all like back to square one and this and that. And you start thinking all these things. But no, once you forgive, once you let, let that go, once you forgive them, they're on God's terms now. The thing is, you just released yourself. Sometimes the people that are, it's not them that they were in captivity. It's you that's in captivity. They want to get out, but they can't because of the same reason, because they have to let it go of it. They have to heal. There has to be a process. No matter what the situation is, and the, the thing is, there could be so many things. There has been people that have been raped, abused, molested, you name it. But the moment they get a hold of what forgiveness is, when they get a hold of a revelation of what it is to forgive and to let go, of, then they start living. Then they start being able to be free. And you may be wondering, well, that's so hard. How could I let go of this? How could I forgive this person that did so wrong? Well, do you want to continue living that way or do you want to stay healed or do you want to be healed? Do you want to be in this situation or be in this other situation? The Lord, you got, we got to understand that once we let it go, we, we, give, we give that person and we put it in the hands of the Lord now. And which brings us to the third point. You got to remember who your defender is. You got to remember who your defender is. Sometimes if somebody said something and you think that you're like feeling like it's kind of offending you, just let it go in that moment and let, Lord, let the Lord defend you. The Lord will defend you. Sometimes somebody that's next to you will begin to defend you. Sometimes something will happen and then it'll bring shame to that person. It will bring conviction to that person and say, and say you know what? This is what I said. This is what I did. This is what, and this is why I did this to offend you. But you know what? I got conviction now. What I did and what I said was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. It was out of order. It was out of context. So forgive me. God will begin to work in their heart. God will bring them into that humility spirit. What happens is sometimes pride doesn't allow you to admit it. Pride doesn't let, allow you to let it go. Pride doesn't let you to go to God because what? Now all of a sudden you think you're bigger than God? If God forgave that person already and you can't forgive them, you're telling God that you're bigger than him. That you can hold that person captive when God already forgave them. L listen to this. Choosing to protect your heart also means protecting your re relationship with the Lord. Protecting your heart also means you're protecting your relationship with the Lord. Because everything derives from your heart. Everything. Every word, every action. That's why the heart can be so deceitful. That's what the Bible says. So choose to go to the Lord. Go to the Lord. Go to the Lord. I'm going to ask Adam if he can come up. And if you can please stand with me. You know, as, as we've been talking about offenses, I think here within the, these walls, we could say everybody has been offended at one point. Maybe somebody's offended right now. Maybe you're offended at your neighbor. Maybe you're offended at somebody within the church. Maybe you're offended at somebody at, at home, at work. Can you guys lower the lights, please? So this is what I want, I want you to do. If, you've been, if you have been offended or if you're offended right now, I want you to come to the altar. If you're tired of carrying the offenses, if you're tired of carrying that load and say, you know what, I'm tired of carrying this. I feel like I can't breathe at night. I feel like I can't move no more. I feel like I can't live no more. I'm just tired of carrying this. Maybe it's been years and it's still there. Maybe it's been years and it is still there. You got offended because of this. You got offended because of that. The Lord knows what you're carrying in your heart. 
The Lord knows. The Lord knows. There's nothing hidden. There's nothing hidden. Maybe, maybe you took an offense because a leader left you because they abandoned you. And you wonder, how could I move on? How could I be effective? How could I be doing this if I'm still carrying this offense? How could I break free? How could I break free? If the enemy caught you with an offense today, he has to release you in the name of Jesus. Listen to what Matthew chapter 5 verse 23 through 24 says. So if you're presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple and you suddenly remember someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar. Go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. That even if you're bringing something to the altar, maybe, maybe that's why you never hear an answer. Because all this time you've been offering, every, all this time you've been sacrificing, you've been doing all these things. But you haven't reconciled with the person you had an offense. And you wonder why nothing, there's no fruit, nothing's showing. But it's because of an offense. Because of what somebody did. So today you got to make a decision. Today, you got to say, you know what? If your father abandoned you, if your mother abandoned you, what does the scripture say? What does the Bible say? But I will not abandon you. This is what the Lord says. But I will not abandon you. Maybe you were an orphan. Maybe you didn't have nobody. You've been carrying this whole time the offense that you were abandoned by yourself. Maybe it's spiritually. Maybe you've been abused spiritually by leaders, by pastors, I don't know. And you've been carrying this offense this whole time. It's time to let it go. It's time to let it go. Is there anyone else that needs to release an offense? Maybe it's somebody that you, maybe it could be maybe your spouse. Maybe they didn't even know. They did something to you. Maybe they said some words. Maybe they said something that pricked your heart. Maybe they said something that all of a sudden changed how your marriage was. And you're like, how can I change? How can I do this? How can I move on? What can I do, Lord? All it takes is for you to release it. All it takes is for you to bring it at the altar. Bring it to the altar. Bring it to the altar. Is there anyone else? Please, I'm asking you. Don't let the enemy subdue and do, do his will against you because he ha still has that lure in your mouth because he has you hooked. Let go of that offense that your brother told you and sin because the Lord wants to heal you. The Lord wants to restore you. That's what sozo life is about. We can't be in church and still be hurt. We can't. Why? Because his presence has been here the whole time. His presence has been here the whole time. But have you cried out to him? Have you asked him, oh God, can you remove this from me? I don't want this lure. I don't want this bait. I don't want this no more. I don't want to carry the offenses. Today I bring them to the halter, oh God. Today I bring them. I, I declare that there will be a healing in my soul. There will be restoration. That what I, the decision I have made right now, that the moment when I leave here, I will make things right with that person that who offended me. This is, this is the time. This is the time. This is the time. This is the time. Maxine, could I have some background if you can? This is the time. Can you play that last song? Yeah. I think in this moment, just the Lord reminded me about that song. You have maybe felt like you've been in the fire. You've been in the fire. You've been in the fire, in the fire of offenses. And you're like, what can I do, oh God? But today I declare that you're going to be healed. Today I declare that you will be restored. Today I declare that what the enemy meant for evil, the Lord will return it and he will bring it as good as a blessing. And he's going to do something miraculous. He's going to do something supernatural with those individuals that offended you because today you get released. The enemy may have caught you, but you get released today. 
You get released today. You get released today. So as they sing, and everyone that's back there, I want you to go ahead and pray for every individual that's up here in the front, that today the captives are set free. Today the captives are set free. Come on, come on, come on. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Hey, you can pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. If you don't know what to pray, pray in the Spirit. Once we provoke, once we begin to do, we set the atmosphere, things begin to change, things begin to change, the atmosphere gets prepared. Why? For the presence to come in. Why? Because the glory is already here. The glory is already here. The glory is already here. Come on. Come on. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in When I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone there was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the seas And should I ever need reminding Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears a burden where another died for me There is another in the fire There is another in the fire All my dead left for dead beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore Should I fall in the space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way I will bow to the things of this world And I know I will never be another in the waters holding back the seas should I ever need reminding the power set me free there is a grave that holds nobody now that power lives in me there is another
Nothing separates me from the love of my Father. Nothing separates me from the love of a Father. The love that protects me. The love that provides for me. The love that protects me. Love that provides for me. There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all, through it all, through it all, through it all. Oh, come on me in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. Oh, I know I will never be alone. There'll be another in the fire standing next to me. Another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need a reminding? How good you've been to me. I'll count the joy come every battle. Cause I know that's where you'll be. Oh, I can see the light. Darkness, as the darkness bows to him, I can hear the roar in the heavens. As the space between west and I can feel the ground shake beneath us. As the prison walls cave in, nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There is another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding how good you've been to me, I'll count the joy come every battle. I know that's where you'll be. I can see, I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bounds to him. I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between west and I can feel the ground shake beneath us. As the prison walls cave in, well, nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between. I can see, I can see the light in the darkness. As the darkness bows to him, I can hear the roar in the heavens. As the space between west and I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in. And nothing stands between us. There's nothing stand between us. Nothing stands between us anymore. No offenses stand between the Father and me. Forgiveness rushes in, forgiveness rushes in, because I'm forgiving, because I'm forgiving those who've hurt me. Because I'm forgiving me from hurting other people. I'm forgiving. Just like my Father.
in the darkness as the darkness bows to hell i can hear the roar in the heavens as a space between west and i can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in oh nothing stands between Nothing stands between. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There'll be another in the waters holding back the seas. Or should I ever need a reminding? How good you've been to me. I'll count the joy come every battle because I know that's where you'll be I'll count the joy come every battle because I know that's where you'll be I'll count the joy come every battle because I know that's where you'll be I'll count the joy come every battle because I know that's where you'll be the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord comes rushing in, comes rushing in, the joy of the Lord, the joy of my Father comes rushing in, comes rushing in. Strength for weakness, strength for weakness, beauty for ashes, joy, strength for weakness, beauty for ashes, wholeness for brokenness. Broken hearts are being made new. Broken hearts being made new. This is what you do. This is what you do. Joy for heaviness. This is what you do. Peace for turmoil. Joy for heaviness. For turmoil, faith for fear, faith for fear. When I am weak, He is strong. When I am weak, He is strong. I'm not afraid of being weak in His presence. I'm not afraid of being weak in His presence. Brings me strength, you bring me joy. Because there's another standing next to me. Thank you, Lord. There's another who set me free. I'm using my freedom to bring you glory. Using my freedom to bring you glory. Now that I've been set free, I'm using my freedom to bring you glory. Now that I've been set free, I'm using my freedom to bring you glory. It's not I who lives. It's not my life anymore. It's not mine anymore. But Jesus lives in me. Jesus lives in me. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
you know, as I was praying, I was, I was reminded, you know, in the old, back in the old times, when uh, the shepherd was out with the sheep, there was something he did to protect the sheep. And he would always grab oil and anoint the heads of every sheep that he had. The reason behind this, there was something in the natural, the reason why they anointed the heads of the sheep. And it was so that no ticks or parasites can go into the ears because there was so much oil on them that the, that the, that the ticks would actually slip off. They couldn't, they couldn't hold on. The ticks couldn't come in. Well, spiritually, this is what needs to happen. We need to, we need to continue to anoint ourselves daily. You, you pray for your family. I'm talking about the priestly, the, the, the priests in the house, the men in the house. Grab oil, anoint your kids, anoint your wife. Let it be something that you consistently do because the enemy's trying to attack every time. He won't let off. He doesn't back off. He doesn't take a vacation. He doesn't take a vacation. So anoint, anoint, grab oil, anoint. You don't have anointing oil? Hey, grab olive oil. Pray over it. Anoint, anoint. So, if you didn't get anything out of the message, the one thing I just want you to remember is be quick to forgive. Be quick to forgive. We all miss it at one point. We all, I'm not perfect. I already told you of one instance where I slipped and I offended somebody. Maybe there's other people that are offended of something I have done. And sometimes you may have done something and you don't even know that you offended that person. And that's why we have to walk in that constant walk of humility. And humility, what, is the, what does the Bible say? Be slow to speak, slow to speak, quick to hear, and quick to forgive. We got to be quick to forgive. Sometimes we speak before we start listening, and then that's what gets us in trouble. Our mouth starts going, and then it creates an offense. So go ahead, bow your heads, and close your eyes, and I'll pray before we dismiss you. Father, I just thank you for this moment. I thank you. I always stand in awe of everything that you do. I always want to be that vessel in your hands, oh God. I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you, Holy Spirit. I ask that you touch your people today, and I plead your precious blood upon them. And I also pray for those that are watching online, if they've been offended by something or by someone, that there is healing that's taking place right now in their hearts. I also pray for those that are fighting through COVID right now, Lord. I ask that you touch them, oh God. That your anointing begins to touch them. For you, there is no distance. There is nothing that is impossible for you, oh God. As your word says in Psalms verse 107, verse 20, that you send your word to heal. I send it forth right now, Lord, to heal those that maybe are having difficulty breathing because of COVID. But I declare, Lord, that you are touching them right now, that you're touching their lips, that they will begin to praise, that they will begin to bow, that they will begin to kneel and declare that you are Lord and that that thing is coming off of them in the name of Jesus. Touch them right now, Lord. I declare that it's the same power that is in here, the same power that will come in your room. I thank you right now, Lord. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. And we give you the glory and the honor. And everyone says, amen, amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you next Sunday. Pastor will be with us.